Hi guys. Uh, today I'm going to fit some arrow catches to the front of the bonnet. Um, these are they. Now they're not cheap, but they are good. Um, beware of copies because there are a lot about, and these are lockable ones. Um, and I'm doing it because these Puma bonnets get stolen quite a lot, and every Land Rover owner knows all you've got to do is lift the bonnet up um, vertical and it comes out because there's nothing stopping it apart from the bush in the back there has got a slot in it. There are a few so-called so security ones about and all that they are is a, a slightly different hinge with a, the bush without a slot in it. So you have to take a pin out or actually take the hinge off. But I still think there's a bit of a, a vulnerability there. So, not being one to follow the crowd I'm going to stick these catches on. I think I'm going to put them sort of somewhere here because they need to go on the flat and as you can see the bonnet's sort of rounded quite a lot. So we've got to find somewhere underneath that they can attach to. Right, well looking underneath there's very few spaces they can go and I'm going to try and get them roughly where that bonnet catch is or bonnet stay. It says in the manual you can put them along the front, sort of original holes, but this is all a bit plasticky and of course too far towards the front because of the, the curve. So this side's got the same bolts, so hopefully they should all be in the same sort of place, these two here. So I'm going to make some brackets up for both sides. This one's slightly more difficult because it's got a, another bracket on it for the aircon. Um, I think it's the aircon anyway. So. Let's go off and quickly make up some brackets. There we go. As if by magic. Just a couple of bits of uh, inch by quarter, or 25 by 6, with a couple of 30 by 6 bits welded on the top. And they're going to go down in there somewhere, both sides, and then the stays come up through the hole. So, let's see if I can get them fitted. Keep having to put the camera down and doing a bit and then start again. Right, I put them on fairly straightforward, literally just undo the bolts, nothing falls apart because it's all held in place by other bits and screw them on. So that's dead easy that bit. And this is the part that goes up through the bonnet. That's got to go in there. So first of all we've got to figure out just about where that's going to come through the bonnet so we can drill a hole. So I'm going to screw that on or bolt it on loosely and see if we can get it to or we'll get to figure out where it's going to come up here on the bonnet. Alright so what I've done tightened it down and on the top of it here right on the very top I put some paint out of a paint um, pen and then shut the bonnet. And as you can see, it's worked perfectly. It's left a little tiny mark where the center of it touches. So that's where my first hole is going to be. So I'll get my, my drill out and go through the first skin. Now I've gone through the first skin and I've worked out approximately where it's going to come through on the top skin and, and marked it all out with some masking tape. So it's going to be easier once it's done. Right drilled through it, I'm skipping through this a bit, There's a, these templates come with the kit. Uh, you put your crosshairs on the bonnet and line up the lines on the template. Now these radiuses I'm going to try and use over here we have a box full of old tank cutters. I'm going to see if I can find a couple that will fit those radiuses because it will make life so much easier if I can. Typically I've only got one that will fit perfect um, so I've done that one and then this other one up this bigger end is actually slightly smaller but I'm going to use it anyway because it just means it's going to be so much less hassle trying to cut it out by hand. So there we go, I'll cut the other one out and now all I've got to do is join the lines up and I'm going to use my little Dremel for that. You don't have to use a Dremel but if you've got one, why not? So we've got to go through both skins obviously, I'm not quite sure, I think I'll have to do the other one from underneath. 
because I won't get through it with this from the top obviously. Right, so I've cut them both out and they're still a little bit rough as you can see through both skins because I've got uh, now to go round with the Dremel with a little sanding drum on to try and get it to fit properly. I'm going to keep trying it in, sanding a bit, trying it in. You don't want to go too mad because you don't want it to be too big because the tolerances around the holes are quite small. Alright, so we've got it in. There it is, rounded out both skins, quite nice and neat. So now I've just got to drill the holes, put the plate underneath and screw it on. Then we can remove all the, the, the uh, masking tape. So there we go, it's done. But I've sort of skipped a little bit because there was a little bit of hassle, which I will demonstrate on the other one better. So the catch is in, or the stay, or whatever you call it. And you can see it looks a mess under there now because it became apparent that I couldn't get the bottom plate on by cutting the same size hole as the top, so I had to cut it out bigger. And I've had to sort of hack it about a bit to get it in. And on the other side, I'm going to do a slightly different job. But it works and it fits a treat. So we're going to have a go at the other one. I've already laid it out, this one. Um, but as I say, I'm going to do something slightly different on this one. And I've actually got my tripod out, so now you will actually be able to see me doing it. Um, I don't know why I didn't do this on the first one. And to make sure I get them both in line, um, I've made a template from the other wing. Came up from the wing, drew around it, and then all I've done is turned it over and made sure that they're in, the, in line, so that you, they're in the same sort of plane, so it doesn't look odd. Right, so only one of a nervous disposition, look away now. We're going to drill through the bonnet. A perfectly good Puma bonnet. I know I'm bound to get some people say, oh, you've ruined the bonnet. Well, actually, I don't think I have. Um, I've just made it harder for scumbags to nick me bonnet. This is quite a sharp tool, that one. So that one goes through quite quickly. Can't get that bit out. Now I'll put the second one in, and it's not quite such a good tool, this one. I don't know where it came from. It's a much finer teeth on it, and it clamps up differently. So let's hope it will hold. Because the trouble I was having was that the centre drill was slipping, which it's doing again. So it's not actually going around the centre drill, so we're not going down in through the bonnet. Keeps. Let's see if I can tighten it up a bit more because this one, the clamp of the drill actually holds the bit. Let's see if we can still do it. We'll get there. Right, we're through. Now we can work on the bonnet. Now you want to... I've put um, some cutting paste on these because you don't want to get the bonnet too hot and the paint to sort of shrivel up around it. Obviously you're going to get some of that because it, it will get hot but if you can go slowly with your drill and have a bit of cutting paste on there it will reduce the risk of doing too much damage to the paintwork. All these things that, you know, this is what I'm doing is only a delaying tactic for any thieves, you know, if they really want it they'll do their homework and they'll figure out how to get around it and nick it, but it's it's just making them take longer to get it off, you know, it's not a quick snatch job, they've got to think about this and hopefully they'll go to someone else's who's easier. Right, that's that one. Now all I've got to do is join the, the dots as it were, but underneath what I'm going to do is put through some bigger cutters so that I don't have to hack the inside about like I did on the other side. So there you can see I've put two bigger sized ones through which will hopefully make it look a lot less messy. 
and make it easier to do. Right, well, unfortunately, my Dremel, the battery's gone dead, so I'm going to use my cordless grinder. And I'll put quite a small disc on it because you've got to be careful where you let the disc come to at each end of the cut. I must admit this is much easier than doing it with a Dremel and you might be better off doing it with something like this in the first place. Piece of piss this way. Now I should, if I'm careful, be able to get to the inner wing or the inner skin, sorry, from here as well. And so you've just got to be careful, watch what you're doing. Like all these jobs it's have a bit of common sense and think about it. Just angling it, obviously, each way because the holes are that much bigger underneath. So we're just sort of mirroring it, but sort of quarter of an inch wider all the way around on the inside. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so again, because my Dremel's packed up, I'm going to use my air grinder with a carbide bit and again try this in bit by bit. So, again, just be careful. You know, it's slow and steady. Don't go too mad because you don't want the hole too big. And so the tolerance between the edge of the hole and the holes that hold it on is quite slim. So you don't want a big hole, otherwise you'll be cutting into your fixing holes. I'm just following the template round that, as I say, came with the, the kit. You get two templates, so it doesn't matter if you muller the one you've done on the, one side, because you've got another one. That's not bad. Now I've just got to do the inner wing because that's what's stopping it going down. I keep saying inner wing, inner skin. So that's what's stopping it going down. And so you can get to it. You just have to angle it a bit to get to it from the outside. As you can see, I've put a towel across the bonnet or across the engine. It's catching all the nasty bits, or the majority of them. I don't want any of them getting anything vital. And at the end of the day, again with these, you know, people might poo-poo me doing this, ruining a bonnet, or you know, whatever, showing people how it's done. But if they do nick it, it's going to be less valuable with two catches in the bonnet. Look at that, lovely fit. So, anything to make it harder for them. Right, just blow off all the swarf. You don't want to wipe it off because you'll scratch your paintwork. So now I'm just going to spot the holes for the screws through the template, or through the catch, through the template into the bonnet. I'm not going to go right through because uh, I don't want to risk damaging the, the actual catch. So I'm literally just spotting them, but this drill's not particularly sharp. There we go, all spotted. I'm just going to go through them all. Remarkably thin these bonnets. Doesn't take a lot to punch through them. And if people are wondering about cutting through the both skins, 
it was on a hole anyway, so really it hasn't done a lot of damage. It hasn't. I don't think it's weakened it in any way, um, because there was already a hole there. Um, so it's not like it was anything structural around the bonnet. I've just enlarged the hole on the inner inner skin. So. Clean the catch up, make sure it, the holes line up. Yep, they look pretty good to me. So I think we can do away with the masking tape now. Clean the bonnet before I put that on so it should be nice and shiny underneath because the, the truck is actually quite dirty at the moment. Could do with a damn good wash. So I've run a bead of uh, black mastic, no, black silicon around the inside edge and I've put the nylock nuts into the bottom bracket which I held quite tightly which is a real bonus you don't have to fiddle about trying to hold them in so I'm just going to feed the bracket in from underneath the bottom bracket and we'll put the top one on and feed the screws in. These are, I think they're M4, these screws. They're pretty tiny, but they appear to be uh, stainless, although they're black, they've been anodized. But they, uh, they say A2 on them, and that's usually stainless, so I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Um, so there's nylock nuts underneath, just checking that they, they're actually all going in the right place. It's relatively straightforward. You know, they supply most of the bits and pieces, or all the bits and pieces, obviously, but like with the template, uh, and their, their website has got quite a good video on how to, to fit them. So, if you want any tips, go and have a look at their website. And I think this is going to be a, a real addition to the motor. I think they are going to look quite nice. I'm going to say it's just an extra layer of security. Nothing is 100% secure these days. If the scumbags want it, they'll figure a way to get it. If you, I was told that if you can delay them by two minutes, you're more likely to have your motor and its bits and pieces still there the next day. So this is another good few minutes, I would guess. Or at least another minute if they've done their homework. Who knows? But it's, as I say, it's just something else to try and slow them down. Right, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't, but the silicon is squidged out all around the edges there, so I know it's gone everywhere. So I'm just going to quickly clean that off before it sets. And then I'm going to put this last bolt in and get it lined up. Now I'm actually going to cut this one off once I've got it how I want it because you can see there down by my fingers that's the overflow hose for the radiator goes into the expansion tank and if I leave the thread on this one it's going to rub on it so obviously I don't want it to rub on it so once I've got it the length I want it I'm just going to whip the end off it so that the pipe's not running on it rubbing on it now this is just a bit of trial and error. It's probably going to be quite boring because it's you've just got to drop the bonnet and see where it comes. That's obviously sticking up far too high. So we're going to drop it down again. And you may have noticed, or you may not have noticed, I've actually taken off, to make this job much easier, the centre catch that locates the bonnet in the middle. It's the thing with the spring in it. 
ever so easy to get off. It's just a um, big nut at the back, like a locking nut, and then you just unscrew it. And I just counted how many times I unscrewed it from the bonnet. And it just makes fitting these much easier because you can just lower the bonnet onto its stops and check everything out without having to push it down into the bonnet and catch, you know, make it catch, then go back inside and undo it again. So that's a little tip. Makes life a lot easier. And then once this is all sorted, I shall put that back. Now the rubbers on those um, arms, they're supposed to compress up underneath, but I'm not sure that the bonnet goes down far enough to do that. I don't think it's critical that they do, but that's what they're there for. Uh, that's the idea of them. But uh, as I say, I'm not sure that the bonnet will squish down far enough because the brackets are that far down. I guess if you were putting these pins in the bonnet edge, front edge, on an ordinary vehicle, they would be much lower and you might even have to cut the rubber down. But obviously with these Defender bonnets, they're that much higher. Look at that, perfect. Pucker. So now all I've got to do is cut it off, put it back on, and see how it works. All right, so I've taken it all off again, cut it down. You can see now it's nowhere near touching that pipe both on and this is the, the messy hole this side and the not so messy hole that side I just had to ease out for those two bolts on the right but it's a lot less messy and I'm going to paint inside all there before I'm finished so let's see how it works so I put the pin back in the bonnet just checking because I've painted them now just seeing that the paint's drying yet so I've put the pin back in the bonnet, so I lower the bonnet, catch it down as normal, and close my pins. And look at that, that is rock solid, much more solid than it ever was, because there's quite a lot of play in these bonnets. Pucker! Pleased with that. And that's taken me about four hours, all in all, from start to finish. Um, I took my time, you know, you probably could have done it quicker, but I took my time and I think the result's pretty good. Lovely. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you on the next one.